Hi, this is a book review for Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. Before we begin, I just want to mention a few of the trigger warnings in this book. First of all, being the eating disorder, then we have graphic sex and cursing and homophobia. I could mention a few more, like politics, if that's a trigger warning. Um, it could be. So just be aware of that before we get into the review. Milkfed is following Rachel, a woman living in LA who is dealing with an eating disorder. She also is from a Jewish upbringing but is not very religious, which comes into play when she falls in love with another woman who is from a strict religious Jewish family. There is also a contrast between Rachel's anorexic body and Miriam's obese body that Rachel is afraid of becoming. And at the center of these two contrasting narratives, we have the love affair between the two women and we are asking ourselves, will Rachel overcome her eating disorder and will Miriam choose Rachel over her Jewish, strict Jewish family. So the reason I picked this book up is because I was expecting something along the lines of The Miseducation of Cameron Post, which is one of my favorite books, and I thought Milk Fed would also have this contemporary coming of age vibes and a love story between two women and overcoming an eating disorder and like optimistic vibes, cozy vibes spring vibes maybe. However, I got a cynical, almost nihilistic look at this woman, her thoughts, her life in LA, her eating disorder and her affair with another woman and her mother issues as well. Despite my expectations being completely and utterly wrong, I liked this book. I liked how real and raw it was. I didn't like how bleak it was at times and the eating disorder representation was kind of dubious to me but I did like how the prose flowed just like poetry. The author is a poet, this is why her prose was very poetic and beautiful, and I also liked how real and down-to-earth and crossing the lines um, Rachel's thoughts were. If I had to describe this book in one word, I would say it is very daring and something I've never read before. So I want to start with some cons or the negative things about the book, and then I'll go on onto the positive things. With regards to characters, while reading this book, I felt that Rachel was completely alone in the world, although there were some other characters. I mean, she's obviously also having this, like, friendship slash love affair uh, with a, another woman, but we were inside her head so deeply that it was sometimes hard to imagine that she's actually living in a world with other people. This book was really bleak and dark at times, which I liked it, but sometimes it really crossed the line for me, especially with, because it was dealing with an eating disorder, which is something that I haven't experienced with. While reading this, it was really dark and hard at times to read it, so not necessarily a objectively bad thing, I just um, am speaking from my perspective. It was sometimes really dark and bleak and hard to read through some of the passages in this book. Also, this whole eating disorder representation, especially Rachel getting better or starting to eat food, I think it wasn't even like the point of the book to show us how Rachel overcome her eating disorder, um, but if you're looking for a good representation of an eating disorder, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book. I mean, I think that her disorder was really nicely shown. I mean, it's really accurate how a person having an eating disorder thinks, but the recovery part of it, if that could be considered recovery in this book, wasn't that accurate. Maybe a bit too fast. The second half of the book kind of down played the eating disorder and focused more on the affair of the two women, which um, I liked how it was written, but overall, when I'm thinking about it, um, the eating disorder representation may not be um, as well done as I was expecting. I also have to mention that Rachel's gaze on Miriam, like how she saw her body, how she described Miriam's body, may be offensive for some people. Uh, I thought it was well done, uh, considering that Miriam is obese, and this is one of the first books where I read that an obese person gets a role of a sex symbol, in a way, uh, which I really liked. However, I think that at some points it could be considered a bit offensive. For example, at one point in the book, Rachel is looking at Miriam's body and thinking how it would be 
um, to see Miriam play basketball, which mm, I don't think if that's like appropriate. I mean, I know we are not supposed to like Rachel. She's really, um, you know, a real imperfect person. And all of her thoughts aren't presented as though they're the thoughts of the author. They're very clearly the thoughts of Rachel. And Rachel does have an eating disorder. She does have this fear of becoming fat. So if she sees another person who is who has a big body, basically the body that Rachel is fearing, um, it is realistic that she would think kind of, you know, in such a way about Miriam. But on the other hand, Rachel, you know, falls in love with Miriam and she does find her sexually attractive. So these two things are kind of, they don't go together for me in this book. Because on the one hand, we have Rachel fearing and not wanting to be uh, like Miriam. And on the other, she's worshipping Miriam's body. She's really finding it sexually attra attractive. So these two things were kind of questionable to me. I didn't understand how they would go hand in hand. So another thing I want to mention is that this book had a lot of references, especially like LA slash America references that I didn't understand. So for someone who is reading and who lives outside of America, it might be hard to connect with some of the parts, which it was for me. So just to wrap the negative things about the book, at one point Rachel makes a golem uh, out of clay. She makes a clay sculpture of the body type she's afraid of having and this is basically a sculpture of a fat not fat obese woman later in the book she gives this clay sculpture to miriam saying that she made a sculpture of miriam which um, this is another like point in the book where i was like how can she be so repelled by this body type and yet find it so sexually attractive i just didn't understand it i accepted it i enjoyed the book overall but this this fact was um it just doesn't go together it doesn't go together for me so these are the things that i kind of thought were lacking in the book and now i want to go into the things that i really really was glad of and i thought were the strongest in this book so this book to say the least or the most is not a romance book and i was really glad it wasn't it wasn't a romantic book at all it showed the relationship or maybe it would be more like accurate to say the affair between Rachel and Miriam which I really really enjoyed. I enjoyed how real and down to earth it was. We got to see these small moments in a friendship and a glowing romance between two same-sex people in such a um, I don't know, realistic way, like an awkward way. Of course, the strongest area of this book was the narrator's voice. Rachel's voice was so distinct, so strong, and it was hers, her own voice. I could not see the author, hear the author in the narrative. It was Rachel. Everything that was said, every thought we saw, every sexual fantasy we saw, it was so Rachel. And I really, really like that. So Rachel's mind is not a nice place to be. It is a really depressing place full of anxiety, sarcasm, irony, maybe nihilism as well, and judgment of other people, of other things. It is, she is not a lovable person. She is just a real person. And we get to see her thoughts about everything uncensored, about her mother issues, about her sexual fantasy, about her thoughts on basically everyone she comes into contact with, about her eating disorder. Her eating disorder is re depicted very, very in detail and it could be triggering for people who dealt with an eating disorder. Another thing that I really, really liked in the book was that it bordered with magical realism at times. We would see Rachel's dreams, which were so magical. We would see something she imagined in the moment. The moment the scene would stop only to show her, show us her imagination, her daydreaming. And in the end, it was always revealed to be a reverie, a daydream, but we would flow into the scene in such a magical way. Like when I'm thinking about this book, I could imagine every scene so vividly and I could see it being like adapted to some indie movie and like win awards on Cannes Film Festival so easily because this is, at least it reminded me of that type of 
you know, vibe, that type of book that would be like indie slash kind of um, coming of age, although not that, you know, teenage coming of age, but like 20 something, what is my life, who am I? Is this adulthood coming of age, if you know what I mean? Again, Rachel is at times so dark and ironic and she does not pull any punches. Like, she has her thoughts, she has what she thinks is right or wrong, she's a judgmental person and she's not apologetic about it. And this can cause a lot of people to be shocked or even offended by Rachel, but this book is written so well that you know that Rachel's thoughts aren't necessarily authors. Rachel's thoughts are her own and she's her own imperfect person and I really like that. I might have not agreed with everything she said, but I appreciated how honest she was. So in the end, the absolute best thing was the prose and the writing. You can really see that Melissa Broder is a poet because her sentences are flowing off the page. I don't know what that means. I do not know what flowing off the page means, flying off the page. I don't know. I don't know. It, it just sounds right for this type of writing. I enjoyed every moment, every sentence of this book. I flew through this book. I read it in four days and I um, would have read it faster if I didn't have so many exams and stuff. This book was absolute treasure to read from like the objective prose level standard of point of view. <laughs> and I really like that this whole book is such a tragic comedy, not at all the optimistic, happy, cozy book I thought it would be. And I so didn't mind. This book was just... It, it, it kind of surprised me, I will say that. I didn't expect it to be so bleak, but I, in the end, really, really ended up loving it. In the end, this book is not really trying to show you how to get over an eating disorder or how to win and fight against homophobia. This book is just about one woman and the depressions, anxieties of life. I don't know. It's not a book that would give you a clear message of everything's gonna be okay. This is a story that's told from the middle into the middle. It does not have a clear beginning. It does not have a clear end. It's a chunk of Rachel's life that we got to see and that's it. So despite the questionable eating disorder representation and gaze on a fat body, which could be offensive to some people, despite that, I really enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the prose, the poetic prose that we got to see. Rachel's strong voice, her thoughts, which were uncensored and very real, cynical, bordering nihilistic. I enjoyed that so much and I thought some of her quotes and what she said were such a relatable thoughts and others I didn't agree with but I just appreciated the freedom of writing in this book. I enjoyed the female desire and sexuality representation. I enjoyed the representation of a woman falling for a woman. Rachel having mother issues was a first for a woman to have mother issues. Usually we see daddy issues, right? So I enjoyed this as well. I wasn't expecting it. In the end, I ended up giving this book four out of five stars because I thought it was really well done. Not maybe my favorite favorite book because it was really bleak and it did threw me into a mood, if you know what I mean, um, especially when I was starting to read it and the thing with the eating disorders. But in the end, overall, I really enjoyed it. I was thinking like between three and four stars to be honest, but the ending kind of, you know, swayed me to the four star area. Um, I was thinking three stars because of these negative things that I already mentioned, like the eating disorder representation and the gaze upon an obese body, which was bordering on worship and also bordering on disgust. At the same time, I can't, I can't explain that. Anyway, I ended up giving it four stars and I really, really enjoyed it. And I might consider giving Melissa Broder another try with her earlier book, Pieces if this is how precious. I don't know how you say it in English. Anyway, if you've read the book, I would love to hear what you thought about it and if you would consider reading it if you haven't read it already. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye!